Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today I've got something really simple that should improve the sound of anybody's home theater and maybe even your two channel, depending on your setup. And that is simply level matching your speakers. Now, every AVR does this a little bit differently. Every brand, every model. Some are a lot better than others. If you don't have a flagship model or thereabouts in either an AVR or a processor, this is probably gonna help you more than if you do. Now, I'm gonna talk about three things. One is level matching, but before we do that, I have to talk about sub-level matching. So this is something that's really common, and I see it with people trying, especially the very first time, for doing the room correction in their AVR. And they'll go through it and they'll get the results, and usually one of the mains, or both, are jacked way up or jacked way down. And usually, correspondingly, the opposite, their subwoofer, either one or both, will be jacked up or jacked down. Now, here's what's basically going on. When the room correction starts, it always starts with one of the mains, either the left or the right, doesn't really matter which, and that is gonna be the base calculation. Everything else is gonna be based around that. So, in this case, it starts with the front left first, and that is what it wants to see as zero dB. Everything else is based around that. So these levels here, are plus or minus from that reading. This center is minus four from that reading. That is the base level. And it determines that just based on its own internal levels. The test tone that is generated by the AVR is at a certain level. Now, what's different with subwoofers is that the physical subwoofer has a gain knob, has a volume knob, and the AVR can't control that. So if that's not in the ballpark, if the subwoofer or subwoofers, for the, for the purposes of this, we're just going to talk about a simple equation. One subwoofer and one main speaker, all right? Pretend everything else isn't there. If this is turned all the way down, say you accidentally turned your gain knob all the way down on your subwoofer, it's going to play the tone for the speaker first, get its level, and then it's going to play the tone for the sub, but it's super low. So the AVR is going to crank that level all the way up, so that would say 10 and your AVR or processor may have a different range. This Yamaha goes between plus and minus 10. And then it's not gonna be enough, so it's gonna to have to bring this speaker down to try to level match what it gets from the sub, because the sub's really quiet, main speaker isn't, so it tries to match them. So that it just gets all out of whack. And conversely, if you had the gain all the way up or too high on your subwoofer, it's gonna play that signal, it's gonna be super loud, so it's gonna to try to bring your sub down, and it's gonna to try to bring this up to match. But you don't want this to ever be off zero. That is your supposed base level. So this whole process is very easy also for quickly dialing in, if you don't know where that range is on your gain knob, to go through your room correction and get these matched, this is really easy to do it that way also. And you really do have to do that first. So I'll show you how to do that. So again, your AVR controls may be a little different on this Yamaha. Here's what you do. Go to test tone. And you can do this anytime before or after calibration. It doesn't matter. It's not going to screw anything up. Go into test tone and just turn it on. I went back out of there. With it on, on that screen, it's going to cycle through everything. But if you leave it on and then go to level, now you can go to them manually and whichever one you're selecting, it's going to play the pink noise through. So that's just a useful tool there. You don't have to stay on the test tone screen and cycle through. You can do everything through the level screen at will. Okay, so for the purposes here, we just want to first balance our sub or subs and the main speaker, the first one tested, in which case is the front left here. So we're gonna go into the levels, front left, and subwoofer. And all you do is raise or lower the subwoofer level itself, either in the app or on the back if it's a knob, whatever your control is, until you get just about the same level. And here's how I'm doing it. This is REW and a U-Mic 1. Now this is the best way to do it, but you don't need it. You can actually do this completely for free if you have got a phone or a tablet. 
Now I played with a lot of these apps and this is one that works very well. There's a free and a $10 version. The free version is all you need. There's a little X when you first launch the program to close out of the subscribe page. They kind of try to hide it to make it look like you have to subscribe. But once you get in it, it works very well. You do need to take anything out of a case. I use it on my phone. Uh, using it like this in the iPad doesn't work accurately. So if you're looking for an actual reading number, don't use it like this. However, we're just looking for the levels to remain the same. So it doesn't even have to be accurate, but it does work very well. So if you want totally free, bing, bang, boom. If you want totally accurate, go ahead and fire up REW and plug in your UMIC one, but you don't need it. And just a quick note about the UMIC one and using REW, the microphone itself has a noise floor of somewhere around 50 or 55 dB. So it's never gonna go below that. Even if you're in a dead quiet room, don't worry about it. It's only meant to be used in a range between 50s and 130 or so. And this is the other cool part. You don't have to have a totally controlled environment like you do for room correction. So if you've got kids in the background, you got a dog barking, you got the kitchen making noise, whatever, it doesn't matter. All we have to do is turn our test tone up here loud enough to get over whatever the noise floor is and we can actually do what we need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna aim for you know, 70, 75, whatever. Noise floor is on this mic showing in the 50s. We just need to get comfortably above that to show an accurate reading. So first thing I'm gonna do is fire up the test tone for that main speaker and just note the level. So I've got the test tone on. I turned up the volume enough on the receiver so that it's comfortably above the noise floor. And I'm gonna stop talking and just see where it's at. Okay, right about 70. Now here's another thing to consider. And that's your listening position. Right now I have the seat configured in its reclined position, like I watch movies. So compared to sitting upright, it's about a foot back and slightly lower. And of course, in a different position for the room treatment and all that. I set my room correction up in the two channel position, which is sitting upright for a perfect stereo image. And what that means is when we test the two main speakers, We have slightly different levels. However, if we actually test in the position the room correction was run and is more important to me, two channel, we can see that they now test both the same. So that's the whole premise. What you wanna do is play that test tone in the listening position of your choice. If your receiver has multiple presets, you could even set two. Go through them one at a time and then manually check just to make sure that it's set everything to give you the same reading. Now that's a good base level, but there is preference. For example, if your dialogue is a little hard to hear, if you don't have a really high quality center, or if it's on the small side, if it's not matching to your speakers, maybe you're just having a hard time hearing things, feel free to bump that center up just one dB. That can make all the difference in the world. Same with your height speakers. If your Atmos effects just aren't cutting it, bump them all up one dB. Do them all evenly. Just see what kind of effects it has. It, one dB makes a big enough difference, certainly in the center to the mains, to be a noticeable effect. And that's personal preference. They don't have to all match, but it's good to know how far off you are, even if your AVR has automatic room correction. So that's it guys. Hope it helps. We'll see you next time.